Cleef. Welcome to another edition of Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. I'm Rod Cleef, and I'm thrilled that you're here. You guys have a real treat today. Uh, I've got C Cliff Averill here, and uh, you know, I'm not even going to steal any of his thunder. I want him to tell you what he's all about, but uh, it's very, very impressive, and uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Welcome to the show, brother. Man, no, thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So why, why don't you just take a few minutes and talk about this incredible career in the NFL and you know, and just kind of bring us current. Take your time. Yes, yes. So, 10-year uh, NFL vet, um, played in the league, played for Detroit Lions for five years. So, go Lions because they're still in the playoffs doing their thing. Right. Uh, but then also played another five years with the Seattle Seahawks where we were able to win a Super Bowl, went to the Super Bowl, uh, went to the Super Bowl twice, been to the Pro Bowl, uh, done quite a few things in the NFL um, and enjoyed my journey, you know, because – uh, I grew up out uh, in in a town right outside of Jacksonville, Florida. Two, um, both of my parents are Haitian immigrants, mm -hmm. so being able to kind of accomplish that one generation after they came to the states has been a uh, very rewarding for everyone involved, and and very much appreciated uh, the, the opportunity to be able to do so. So uh, it's been a, it's been quite a journey. But now, you know, being retired, uh, I've done quite a few things. I had my own radio show. I've done uh, you know some some different things in the media space, but. Uh, real estate just kept calling me. Uh, real estate just kept calling me. And in particular, during the pandemic is when I, I actually started paying more attention to what you were doing, Rod. And and you kind of helped me kind of kind of get my business in order and, and just realizing that, you know, most of our family is a spot to be in. Uh, cash flow is everything. And, um, you know, just trying to build out this this real estate thing. Well, that was much quicker than I expected. And I got to tell you, you glossed over a couple of very <laughs> impressive things. I mean, you, you got to be in the Pro, Pro Bowl. You were uh, named... Uh, you know, Walton Payton Man of the Year for the Seahawks in 2016. Yes, I mean, sir. that's big stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, you, you won a Super Bowl. So, you know, very, very impressive career. And, um, you know, we're going to talk about some of the other amazing things you've done as well. But we'll do that later. Uh, but um, so, and I know you were at my Orlando boot camp, yes, which, was, uh, which was quite a, quite a good time. There was about 1,000 people there. Mm -hmm. uh, got another one coming up in Orlando. When's our Orlando boot camp, Matt? Oh, for never mind. I got a virtual one coming up in April. Come see that one. That's the one you should come to anyway. You don't want to wait till December. The proverbial, you know, what's hitting the fan right now. Yes, it is. So, so, um, so, talk a little bit about what you've done in real estate, and then we'll dig into that a little bit. Yes. So, the the business model that I've kind of created for CA Family Properties is we have uh, where we build luxury. Um, spec homes on the east side of Seattle uh, okay. where you know if, if anybody's in that space there's a lot of wiggle room for you know big pro big margin profit uh, big profits mm -hmm. to be made and then what I do with that is um, I go buy distressed multifamily properties so we go out and we we find distressed properties whether it's mismanaged whether it's you know needs uh, renovations and, and whatnot and um, we we kind of you know bring them back to life and then we rent them out, re refinance, rent them out, and hold on to them for the long haul. Yeah. Uh, I haven't, I've, I've bought, we have about 10 and a half, 11, almost $11 million worth, uh, worth of real estate under, uh, man under management right now. Mm -hmm. And it's just, again, um, what I've realized over the years is it's not about how much money you actually have in the bank, but more how much cash flow you can create. Uh, you know, you want to be able to have that, that money working for you and being able to basically sustain your lifestyle. Yeah. And one of the reasons I started uh, CA Family Properties, honestly, is I wanted to be able to help my family and friends be able to create generational wealth through real estate by creating a platform for them to be able to invest alongside of me. Mm. Um, so that's kind of the goal. That's, that's, that w that's the finish line. If I'm able to get, you know, when I turn 50 and I have all my friends that have invested in real estate and, you know, kind of create an LP and, and they got some cash flow coming in, and um, when we turn 50 and we're like, hey, let's go to the Bahamas for the weekend, I don't have to foot the bill. Everybody has their own <laughs> cash flow coming in. To that be comes from history. So. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's 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 the ultimate goal, but it's uh, it's being able to help friends and family be able to, you know, invest through real estate and create that generational wealth. No, that's a that's a great uh, a great why. And mm -hmm. um, and so uh, you've done some you've done some Seattle spec homes. Mm -hmm. uh, I would caution you, be careful because I think the proverbial you know what's about yeah. to hit the you know what and mm -hmm. uh, and that will slow down fast. But but you've taken those profits, you bought some multifamily. Um, I think you, 
you're in uh, several states, if I recall. Yes, I'm in, I'm in a few different uh, markets. We're, we're in uh, Chicago, we're in Huntsville, Alabama, and then we own a couple things in, um, in Seattle as well. Mm. And I know uh, just following you and kind of understanding uh, what states and what, sta what states you do, what states you don't invest in. Yeah, all you got to do is look at what you're wearing today. It, it, <laughs> <He's> <laughs> well, got, by well, the way, those who are listening, he's blue. got blue shorts and a blue shirt on. Uh, so I'm just, I'm just messing with him. But, yeah. but you know, listen, it's not, that's not a political statement. It's a, sure. it's a it's a it's a freaking cost of doing business statement. It's 1, a regulatory environment statement. It's a you know, it's a tax. Most of these most of the blue states, unfortunately, are completely broke. And yep. So they've got to continue to tax. And for someone with like you, that's a big deal. No you know? doubt. No yeah. doubt. And I and I agree with you, actually. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I've had to learn somewhat the hard way in the sense of just understanding kind of how, you know, from even from a political standpoint, the difference in, you know, landlord uh, friendly cities and states mm -hmm. in comparison to uh, tenant friendly cities yeah. and states. And and you do have, you know, your ups and downs. You have your pros and cons from from both. Both. Um, but again, for me, one of the main reasons why I'm actually in Illinois or in Chicago in particular is because when I first got started and wanting to get into the, the value add space and uh, can't afford really things in Seattle to, to be able to do it that way, because uh, things in Seattle don't necessarily cash flow. You're no. buying it for appreciation, which is not the game that I want to play. But also but going to sh Chicago, uh, when you're out of state, you have to have people that you can trust. And uh, my best friend, I went to Purdue, which was two hours away from Chicago. My best friend's from Chicago. He's a general contractor. So we decided to kind of go into business together and, and kind of build that out together. So that's why I'm in Chicago. Um, but yes, there is a, a there's pros to being in Chicago, but there's also a lot of cons with what you just said. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's it's extremely hard to, to to through the eviction process and different things like that. But if you get some great tenants, you get some um, you know you get a great asset, you can get that cash flow that you're looking for for sure. Though, that's the name of the podcast, brother, because yeah. it's all about the cash flow. And and um, you know you you said something else, and you know when I teach people where to buy. I tell them one of four places. One, your backyard, obviously, which is a two-hour drive any, in any direction because you can day, day, tr day travel and manage it. Second choice is somewhere you grew up or went to school. Um, for you, that'd be Chicago. Yeah. Uh, and third choice would be a place you have boots on the ground. And for yeah. you, that's also Chicago. Yeah. So it checked off two of the boxes. And then the fourth, if you want to know, is somewhere you'd love to visit, might even want to retire. So those are the four options to consider first. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, I mean, we've got an asset in Atlanta, and it's taken about a year to evict somebody, and they're just playing it, yeah. and and it's and it's killing this particular professional property. tenants. Yeah, professional it's, tenants. It's exactly right, and 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 it's killing that particular asset. So talk, so so you use your money to buy distressed assets. Talk a little bit about how you find those. Yes. So as as you know. Um, you know, real estate is all the ultimate team sport. Um, and, and I compare real estate with football and, and being a pro professional athlete because I think football also is the ultimate team sport. You know, we think of Tom Brady, we think of Drew Brees, we think of all these uh, quarterbacks or these elite players. But honestly, if there's not those five guys in front of them blocking for them, they can't get down the field. They can't look as great as they do. And it's the same thing with real estate. Um, it's all about building out your team, uh, whether it's, you know, building relationships with brokers, whether it's building relationships with bankers, um, you know, and 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 I'm big on going to different uh, meetups and different things like that to just build those relationships to get into the community. Uh, and then again, once they know you're serious about buying because you've purchased a few things or you're already in the market, they start to send you deal flow. Yeah. And and that's how I'm able to find a lot of the deals that I'm in. Um, you know, we we just hired somebody, a real estate analyst, actually, to be able to um, you know run performance and different things like that for me mm -hmm. uh, because I'm getting so many so many deals coming. My way it started taking too much of my time so i had to kind of hire someone to be able to do so but it's it's all about you know building out that team and building the relationships with different folks in the in the markets that i want to be in yeah no that's that's a great answer i'm going to have you go a little deeper but that's a great answer yeah no i mean you guys all know you've heard me say it a thousand times this is a, a team sport you don't do this alone and you know, I tell my new coaching students, my warriors, the most important thing you can do is get connected with other yeah. warriors because my, we discovered, I don't know, three and a half, four years ago, our most successful students by far are the ones that are the most connected. And I tell them, that's more important than learning the freaking business. Yeah. Those connections, is, they're more important because mm -hmm. they will ramp your success. And, you know, and as it relates to my warriors, so we started doing things to help facilitate those connections. We do warrior-only events. We've got one coming up in the end of April, I think, and then uh, – 
you know, and then, uh, you know, we do breakout sessions like random speed dating between warriors and, and just a bunch of things we do to, to build those connections because it's so freaking important. But, you, you know, you can you can do the same thing going to meetups like you're doing, yeah. you know, and and uh, um, and you talked about uh, hiring an analyst. And I'll tell you. You know that just ties into this thing being a team sport. Yes. I mean, I'm I'm not. I, listen, I can read a PNL, but I don't love it. Like, <laughs> exactly. I don't even like it. Okay, exactly. and and you know I'm the mouthpiece. I like to get out there and talk. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, my partners have always been either CPAs or incredibly analytical people. Um, you you met one at the Orlando event. I'm pretty yep. sure Craig was there. But mm-hmm. uh, um, but anyway, you know that's that's what you do. You you pick your lane you pick your superpower you decide what you're great at obviously you with your background you you know people want to meet you mm-hmm. they want to talk to you they you know that's a draw for, for sure. sure you want to capitalize on that and then you you hire a line or partner for these other things like you hired an analyst you might ultimately probably hire an asset manager yep. for yourself and so on and so forth so um no, I love it. No. So drilling down on the distressed again. Yes. Okay. So so you have these deals coming across your desk. What are you looking for? Tell me what you tell my peeps here what you're looking for. So I'm always looking for assets that you can add value to. Okay. You know, that's the name of the game. So right. whether it's mismanaged, whether we we're talking about going in and, and renovating the units and understanding kind of what the rents are in that area, mm-hmm. uh, to to renovate the units and, and bring them up. Uh, you know, we like to to buy C plus, B minus assets and try to bring them up, you know. Uh, to a B minus B plus type of type of Good. situation to to again create that that value and then going out and, and refinancing and, and and you know kind of hold on to everything again. But I think the biggest thing is obviously knowing the area, obviously knowing kind of job growth, population growth, all these different things. Mm-hmm. But more so than anything, it's it's mismanaged mismanaged properties are the best ones to go after. Yep. You know because uh, you know some folks they're not realizing that rents have been you know they bump they could bump rents another two or three hundred dollars. Well, as you know in multifamily, that goes a long way with the unit counts, right? So we're we're looking for those types of assets where we can add value and being able to refinance, you know, within a year or so, uh, year year and a half or so, be able to take out our capital and rinse and repeat. That's it. Yeah, that's it's called the Burr method yes. in the single family space, and but it's pretty much the same, same. thing. I, you, you're talking about mismanaged. We're buying an asset right now in San Antonio. Mm-hmm. It's 200 units. It's it's a mile and a half away from a 296 unit that I own. And to give you an idea of the deal, it's uh, it was under contract for 26 million twice, fell through. We're getting it for 20. Mm. So 100, 100, 100 grand a door. The one right next door sold for 137 a door. Oof. I mean, so it's a screaming deal. It's on a lake on there. one side, golf course on the other side. So very exciting. We're, we're raising money for it right now. By the way, if you're accredited, Text the word partner to 72345 and, and take a look at it or go to creecapital.com, C-R-E-E capital.com and check it out. We did a webinar on it and uh, it's a screaming deal and it's filling up fast, but uh, very exciting. Um, but, but again, there's a super value add there. And, and I use an example on that 296 unit that's near this one we're buying where we painted uh, numbers in the parking spaces mm-hmm. and uh, and I said, hey, here's your, you can have your own parking space in front of your units, just 25 bucks a month. We had 100 people take it, and that was an $800,000 increase in value. Yes. That's why we love this business, right? Exactly. And and uh, to go along with that, because, uh, um, you know, a lot of people, they'll ask why not, uh, you know, single family in comparison. And mm-hmm. I, I know you've had your issues with single family. Sure. Uh, but what you just said with multifamily, and what's, what's so impressive is, you add, you control the value. Yeah. You control the value of your asset based on how much you can bring uh, that NOI up, right? right? Get your 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 income up as high as possible. Get your expenses as low as possible, and you get continue to create value. and And those are the opportunities that I'm looking for. The yeah. opportunities where I'm able to create value through, uh, you know, little things like that. Whether you add in washers and dryers and whatever else, but to add that value to get that NOI up as much as possible is yep. is the name of the game. So the NOI is the net operating income. So basically the net income on a property and any increase to that net income is an exponential increase to the value. It's typically 17 or somewhere between 17 to $20 to every $1 in increase. So it's significant. And 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 his, and, and uh, Cliff's comment about single family versus multifamily. With single family, you're only going to get a value equal to the comparable sales, mm-hmm. which you can't control. You, yep. you don't own the whole market, so you can't control the comparable sales. But in commercial real estate, it's all based on a multiple of the net income. So you can absolutely force appreciation that you can't do in the single family space or the residential multifamily space even. You know, duplex, triplex, fourplex. You can't. 
you can't ramp the value like you can in commercial yeah. commercial multifamily. So, uh, and and I love what you said about areas, and that's exactly what we do as well. We're, we're looking for a, a deal, either a, a B and C, a B or C asset in an A or B area yeah. where we can kick butt, and ramp it up, improve it, and bring it up a notch, bring mm -hmm. it up one one level. And you know, I I, I would caution people to buy. C minus or D properties right now would caution them not to do that because that demographic's getting their butts handed to them right yeah. now. It's sad, you know. I, I'm single again, and so I'm I'm going to the grocery store. I, I was <laughs> like, "Holy crap! Are you kidding me? That was 150 bucks." Yeah. I mean, I don't know how people afford it, man. I say it all the time. I, I know inflation is real. <laughs> it's crazy, and and filling up my truck is like, uh, are you kidding me? So so I have a lot of listeners that want to do what you're doing haven't done it yet you know and um and find every excuse not to do it okay <laughs> and, and it's typically fear yeah. or limiting beliefs they their fear of failure or maybe they're comfortable and we all know the comfort zone's a nice warm place and not a damn thing grows, grows there yeah. right uh but uh, you know talk to those people that that are listening that haven't taken action on this yeah tell them what tell them give them some advice i think i think um and <laughs> So it's twofold, right? Because I, I think depending on who you're listening to, you know, if you're looking at social media, it's go big or go home. You know what I mean? With some of these guys. And I, I truly believe you, you should you should crawl before you walk, mm -hmm. whether it's it's starting with a, a small, uh, you know, a, a single family home mm -hmm. and then you build your way up. or what. But it's all about getting in the game. One thing that's for sure is uh, people that are sitting on the sideline can never win. You know what I mean? You can't you can't win. So I, I would say the biggest thing is don't don't you you're gonna have to learn to to make sure you're comfortable being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. um, because the to the journey to success in any space, entrepreneurship, athletics, whatever it may be, like there's gonna be times where you're gonna doubt yourself, you're gonna question yourself, but you learn from the experience, regardless if it's good or bad. There's always things to be learned from the experience. So I would say you got to jump off the porch, meaning you got to you got to take action, um, whether that is, again, buying a single family, whether that's, uh, you know, getting a duplex, whatever it may be. But that's how you're going to learn. I tell people this all the time is, you know, um, I can tell you how to tackle. I can tell you how to tackle Adrian Peterson or somebody like that. But honestly, until you get on the football field and actually try to make a tackle, that's how you learn. It. And it's the same thing with real estate. Um, you know, you can read all the books you want to. You can listen to all the podcasts you want to. But until you actually get in the game, that's when you'll get the experience. That's when you'll learn how to um, how to how to actually how the business is ran and you'll take your little scars, you take your little yeah. bumps in here, here and there, but you're learning. So when you take that next project on, it's a little bit easier. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. I just had an Instagram live with somebody uh, and I and I disagreed with him because he said, don't get into commercial real estate until you're an expert. I'm like, dude, how are you going to become an expert if you don't get into commercial <laughs> exactly. real estate? So we actually did a live and kind of had a little back and forth. It's a lot of fun. He's a nice guy. But this this is exactly what I'm talking about here. You got to actually freaking do it. You got to get in the game. Yeah, you got you got to get in the game. So talk about some of the other parallels between the NFL or any team sport mm -hmm. like that and and real estate well i think with with uh athletics and why i push athletics on my kids uh it's not to make it to the pros or anything like that but there's so many life lessons mm -hmm. that i'm realizing with entrepreneurship and and being an athlete right mm -hmm. whether we're talking about um you know just learning how to deal and work with different individuals mm -hmm. when you walk into a locker room in the nfl um it's people from all parts of the country that have never had black uh, teammates that probably hadn't had white teammates. But on Sundays, we all can come together and, and battle it out for one another. Right. We because we respect the fact that you're putting in work. I'm putting in work and we're going to come go out here and bust whatever teams, but that we're going to go out, you know, we're going we're gonna to do this together and be brothers. And it doesn't matter which, where you're from. It doesn't matter what you believe in. It doesn't any of that stuff doesn't matter. It's the same thing in real estate. And what it teaches me as an entrepreneur is when you get into the real world, when you get into this real estate space, it doesn't matter what people's backgrounds are. Are we aligned in what we're trying to do here? Are we aligned in the type of assets we're going to go after? Are we aligned in the the business model of cash flow, appreciation, whatever it may be? And and what I've learned is that that um, that being in a locker room has taught me to be able to go out into this real into the real world into these different spaces to be able to uh, accomplish my, my goals and then going back to the teamwork aspect of it right again I, I brought up some of these quarterbacks I, I bring up uh, a good friend of mine his name is Michael Bennett a defensive end 
without him, I can't have the success that I had. And without me, he couldn't have the success that I, uh, that he had. But uh, it's the same thing in real estate. Without my property managers, without my, my uh, general contractors, without my brokers, uh, without all these different people, I can't get that touchdown that I'm looking to get, right? I can't move down the field if I don't have the right people on my team. You definitely can't do it by yourself, you know what I mean? And it's the same, like I said, with, with football. You can't do those things by yourself. So in the real estate space or in entrepreneurship in general, you can't move down the field without having a team of people that you can trust a team of people that are doing their job and you don't need a bunch of people that are doing the same thing either right um so i think there's just so many correlations when it comes down to sports and entrepreneurship but real estate in this particular uh, space is that we need other people you need teammates to be able to accomplish your goals and to get to the finish line that's it that's it honestly in my opinion you need it to to get through life as well it's, yes there's life lessons there so let me add to that what you just said about this being a team sport and uh, you know you talked about different backgrounds different you know the team wants the same outcome mm -hmm. it's the same thing in in real estate as is it as it in in sports and so because this is a team sport you're going to have partners and you know i would also suggest that you see if your core values are aligned so mm -hmm. you know and that's that's a common thing um you know, I'm in a partnership dispute right now, actually, because I our core values aren't aligned. And and one thing that that I I've got an incredible resource on this. If you go to RodsLinks.com in the free book session it, section, is a book about the questions you should ask before you get in a partnership. And uh, and you know, because like a marriage, a partnership's easy to get into and hard to get out of. Okay, mm -hmm. and so you want to ask all the hard questions up front. So again, that's in Rod's links, or you can text the word links to seven two three four five. There's a bunch of free resources there, but in the free book section is a great book on asking the right questions before you get into a partnership. So I got a kind of a core question for you, Cliff. You know, you're all re you, you were super successful in the football space, mm -hmm. which do isn't handed to anybody. No. Okay, um, you're becoming super successful in the real estate space. What's the driver here? What's the why that got you to get your ass up early and 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 run laps after laps after laps and and all the things that you do to become an expert in in the NFL? What what drove you? Wow. Uh, what drove me is my mom, to be honest no with kidding. you. Yes. My mom and uh, both my parents, but my mom in particular, because uh, I seen the struggle for uh, a, a Haitian immigrant young lady. My mom's only like five, two. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I remember, you know, her. Uh, being her only child and her having to go pick me up at midnight and walking back home with me on her back uh, uh, to get home just for her to go back to work at four o'clock or whatever the case may be. Um, so just my mom was my why. Um, and if you look at, you know, some of my old Facebook posts and different things like that, it's like my ultimate goal was to be able to get by my mom a house, like because I lived in apartments my entire life. I was just going to ask you what yeah. you did for her. So tell me about it. Yeah. So so I uh, about it's been 12 years now, um, about 12 years ago, I was able to actually buy her house. It was, and it was my first time living in a house because I bought it for both of us at the mm -hmm. time. I wasn't married or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So I bought it for both of us. Uh, but it was the first time I actually had a front yard. It's the first time I had a backyard because, again, I lived in apartments my entire life. Wow. And so to being able to do that for her and, and I, we're actually renovating it now. So the house is pretty much brand new again for her. But just being able to do that for her and knowing where she comes from, you know, growing up in Haiti. Uh, and, and, and she would tell me all the time, you know, it's 300 square feet and it's seven of us living in it and, you know, all these different things. So for her to be able to have her own home, have her own car, uh, being able to working because she wants to work not necessarily because she has to work is 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 a beautiful thing and then of course your why grows after a while right you start having kids you start having a family and now my why is more about um making sure that my kids understand the value of a dollar and also making sure my kids are in tune with reality because sometimes you know mm -hmm. based on the lifestyle and different things like that mm -hmm. you know they, they 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 lose touch and it's not their fault it's actually the parents fault that they mm -hmm. lose touch with with what's going on so I, I try to make sure that you know they're still tapped in into uh, with, uh, with reality making sure that they work make sure they understand I'm big on real estate, on financial literacy, because someday I, I plan on leaving them some, some money behind. Well, the worst thing you can do is leave somebody some money that doesn't know what the heck to do with it, right? Mm -hmm. So I want to make sure they're understanding, you know, just the difference between assets and liabilities and, and financial literacy. So, uh, but my kids are my why right now, my family are my why. And then going back to what I said earlier, being able to help friends and family also create generational wealth uh, through real estate is is another big component to why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Because, again, I want I want my 
as they say, ain't no fun if your friends can't have none, right? It, I want my friends to be able to to be able to uh, live a lifestyle that that they probably didn't think they could, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, you know, it's it's it 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 triggered something with me. I bought my mom and dad a house down here too, and, mm -hmm. and I, there's nothing better than that. I don't oh, no, you know, no you know, and I bought them a car like you, and and took them on cruises, and and you know. Guys, and those of you listening, you got to figure out your why. You know, if you come to one of my boot camps, the first thing we do is goal setting on steroids. Cliff did mm -hmm. it, you know, and you yep. get juice because how do you get anything if you don't know what the hell it is? You got to know what it is you want and why you want it. Mm -hmm. That's the driver. That's no how doubt. you push through the fear. That's how you push past limiting beliefs. That's how you get uncomfortable. And so uh, no, that's a fantastic why. And of course, now it's kids. That's how it goes. And you know what you said as well about about keeping them centered and grounded. Yeah. You know, I made the mistake of buying my kids cars. Yeah. Biggest mistake ever made in my life. I should have made them pay for it. They destroyed them. Yeah. Now they've got nice cars they take care of because they know. But uh, yeah, that was a big mistake for me because I didn't have anything and you know, I wanted to spoil them. But uh, that's, that's yeah. usually the case, though, yeah. right? Especially if you come from nothing. Um, you want your ki you don't want your kids to experience what you experience, yeah. but what you don't realize is your experience is why you're able to get to where you're at now, yeah. right? Because yeah, the journey, right. the part of the journey is 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 the the hardship, struggle. the the struggle, the you know all the, all those different things is what pushes you to get to that finish line, what pushes you to get to where you want to go. And if you don't have any struggle, you won't appreciate what you receive. You won't appreciate what you got. You know, well so said. Well um, said. I think I think that's extremely important for anybody that's successful. Really, is to make sure again we all want our kids to have a better life than we did but sometimes that actually ruins your kids yeah, you know what i mean sure. um so I, I think it's just important for for us to make sure that they they stay grounded make sure they understand the value of a dollar understand what again what financial literacy is as well um so they can kind of you know they can prosper when they get older and not necessarily be some spoiled little brats right no i think kiyosaki has has a, a book or two to educate kids yep. about literacy. I, I recall it's been decades now, but uh, yeah. So let me ask you this. In this, in real estate now, or you know, you know what? If you can see a parallel in the NFL career as well, talk about any aha moments that you had, any epiphanies. Mm -hmm. um, and it can be just real estate if you like, but you can pick whatever you like, but just where, where you're like, okay, now I get it. Yeah. Anything come to mind when I ask that? Yes. So, I mean, real estate or even uh, the NFL, but I think I think the the big thing for me is being out in Seattle, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough, I get to meet quite a few wealthy individuals, oh, the sure. people that write the checks for mm -hmm. the NFL players, mm -hmm. right? Um, and you get to meet them, you get to have dinner with them, you get to, you get to, you know, get to do all these different things. And whether they made their money in tech, whether they made, you know, they sold a company, whatever it may be, uh, a lot of them um, owned a lot of real estate, you know, and I would always ask them like, well, you just sold your company for, you know, X millions of dollars or even billions sometimes. Right. And why, why, why real estate? You know, I, it, it just kept coming up real estate. I own real estate here. I, own, I buy apartments here, you know, I got my own family office, whatever it is. And I, and again, I just kept asking the question and whether it be tax advantages, whether it be a wealth builder, whether it be, um, you know, the cash flow component of it, um, all those things start is what sparked my mind and my interest in wanting to be in real estate. And then when I closed my first deal and I'm like, Oh, wait up, there's checks coming in every month there, you know, that this is mine. Like, you know, and I, I look at, honestly, I look at real estate as an annuity plan, like how, mm -hmm. you know, people do these annuity plans. You're putting some money away and, and, and you're, you're creating the cash flow, but also the appreciation on the backside. So just that aha moment of like, Oh, this is why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a wealth builder on top of what they've been able to create already, yeah. you know? So I think that was one of the moments where it was like, Oh, okay. You definitely should dive into this. But I also believe in order to have success in anything, you got to be passionate about it. Yeah. Right. Uh, me. And, and, and let me stop you. Mm -hmm. And to be passionate, what does that mean? I think Pat, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta love what you do. That's it. That's it. You, you gotta, gotta love what freaking you do. love it. So, you know, if you, if you get into multifamily and you can't love it, you now you can learn to love anything yeah. if you associate pleasure with it. But if you can't learn to love it, for God's sakes, go do something else. I agree. Life is too freaking short. Cause when you love it, you can be passionate about 1, it. 1000. And, and, yeah. and it never feels like work. And right. I think if you're passionate about it too, you're willing to work through those difficult times. That's right. Right. If it's just something you're doing, it's easy to quit. Right. It's always easy. But if you love what you're doing it, and this, this goes for athletes as well sure. like there's a lot of sleepless nights there's a lot of uh, uh days where you know you're, you're you're running by yourself nobody sees that stuff mm -hmm. but if you're passionate and your, your goals are bigger than the circumstances that are in front of you uh go for it and i think 
the same thing with real estate. You have to be passionate about it to be able to have some success. And, and you know, I, I, I truly love real estate. Like, I, I love everything about it. I love the business of it. I love um, that you're creating housing for people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but also, obviously, the, the cash flow and being able to create finances for yourself. One thing, um, 2020, uh, during the pandemic, I, I was sitting there, I was looking, I was like, man, um, there's probably a lot of people that were looking to retire um, that year right that had their 401ks that had all these different um you know pension plans or whatever the case may have been and then 2020 happens and the bottom falls out and now it's like whoa wait up Mm -hmm. my plan is just went to to crap right Right. because the what i thought i was going to have as a a nest egg is gone Mm -hmm. so to me it's like well i want to take that variable out when it's time for me to retire that's right i want to take that variable out so that so that's why i'm into the real estate space because i want to create my own cash flow i want to create my own business so if 2020 does happen or something like that happens again um people are always going to need a place to live that's it you know i I tell the story about my dad Mm -hmm. my dad my stepfather uh so he was really my dad worked for continental airlines for 36 years i mean Mm -hmm. loved that company used to in fact you could tell a continental plane because it had the golden tail we used to call it the the proud bird with the brass ass because they said they their tagline was the proud bird with the golden tail and you could always see him up there and he'd make us put our hands over our hearts if one flew by (laughs) true story so he worked for him for 36 years and got laid off yeah man yeah tell me about job security man exactly so, so what you're talking about is creating your own freaking job security. creating your own job and not yeah. being dependent um yeah. well, i was just having this conversation is like try to control as much as you can mm-hmm. right try and and if you're able to create a business and be able to create your own cash flow why not because being dependent of other jobs and different like they're going to do what's best for their job sure. and that might mean firing you yeah. that might mean uh you know and now your life is in a, and in a if you're in a not the lead dog the view never changes one thousand percent one thousand percent you know um you know, and, and back to your comment about these wealthy people you meet in Seattle that all get into real estate. You know, there's a reason 90 percent of the of the world's millionaires either made it in real estate or invest their money in, in real, real estate, estate yep. because of all the incredible benefits like you taxes, cash flow and, and on and on annuities. Um, so so. Um, uh, I, I mean, you're you're in some different types of real estate now. Yeah. You're, you're you're doing some some you're building some stuff. You're. Um, uh, You've, you've got a ground up thing yeah. coming. Um, you're, you're doing some f- some flips on the high end world, and you're doing some multifamily. Um, what's next? What, what do you think is the next step here? For you? Well, that, that's that's the cycle for me. The cycle is building these luxury homes, mm-hmm. going to buy these distressed properties, renovating them, uh, refinancing, and, and kind of putting that capital back to work again. Um, I am trying, uh, we are in the process of developing a a 70 unit apartment building. 70, 70. 70 apartment. And in Seattle as well. Um, I truly believe when it comes down to developments, you have to be close to that because there's a lot of moving parts. You know, as you know, with with interest rates and different things, you just got to be in tune a little bit more with with that. So, um, but but my main focus is just buying distressed properties, distressed apartments. And they're coming. I mean, like I just described, the one in San Antonio, Antonio, they're they're already coming. There's a lot of lot of a lot of operators that got in trouble. They got this adjustable rate yep, dre- debt, and debt. it's and it's a problem. Um, you know, so let me ask you this: What part of real estate? You know, because you've got a team and you're, you're you hired an analyst. What part do you love the most? Uh, I think I think the biggest thing there's so so one on the development side. I think one of the coolest things that you can do is. You come up with a concept in your head. Um, hey, I, I found this lot. I want to build 70 units as, as an example of, of, of mm-hmm. what we're doing. And then, you know, with, with development that big, three, four, five years later, you're like, whoa, we really built this. I mean, obviously, you got to go get the mm-hmm. capital. You got to right. get with your well, engineers. To te- yeah. There's a lot that goes into it. But to be able to get to the finish line, you're like, damn. Mm-hmm we really built this or the same thing with a distress, distressed property. Like you put a game plan together and then six months later, a year later, 12, uh, you know, 18 months later, you're like, Whoa, it's stabilized. We're getting the cash flow that we said we're going to get. We're, we're, we're in the process of refinancing. So to be able to execute the game plan, mm-hmm. I think is one of the more gratifying uh, sure. things, but now also understanding with the game plan, sometimes you got to audible. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta pivot a little bit because things don't always go the way you, you expect. It's not them to a go. straight line. It's not a straight line. So what I've learned the most important thing of development or uh, going with distressed properties is 
making sure that you you're being conservative on your numbers and you always have a reserve. Yeah. That's what I like. That's the biggest thing that I've learned over the last few years is things don't necessarily go the way you expect them to go. But if you have a reserve and you're you're conservative, you, once you get to you'll get to the finish line. Um, but again, sometimes you got an audible. It's not going to go the way you uh, you, you planted it that day one. But you can still, as long as you keep moving forward, you're going to be all right. That's it. That's it. You keep your eye on the goal. You got to change your approach. Keeping your eye on the goal. You got to change your approach. Keeping your eye on the goal. Yeah. It's just a recipe for success. It's exactly. never a straight line. And, uh, and yeah, about reserves. I mean, you know, I'm sure you heard me talk about that at the yeah. boot camp too. You know, we, we never have a, less than a minimum of six months expenses in, in reserve. You know, like on that San Antonio deal, it's like almost 800 grand just in case. You yeah. Know? You what never the, know. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know you have a lot of people come up to you and say, how did you be a success? How did you do this? How did you do this? Is there a book that you gift more than another? Do you ever just like say, hey, go read this or do anything like that? Well, the good old, I mean, the, 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 everybody's read Rich Dad, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, of course. But one book that, that for entrepreneurs that I've been, um, I've been kind of telling people about is a book. I I forget the author, but it's uh, Who Not How. Who Not How, great book. Love that great book. book. Um, just from a, a, a fundamental standpoint of understanding teamwork, honestly, yeah. hi- hiring the right people to be able yeah. to get you to the finish line, yeah. right? Um, so I think that's the one book that I, I definitely like a lot is that Who Not How because it just it just teaches you how to how to process and how to how to get the right people around you to be able to march down the field to get touchdowns. How old are you now? I'm 37. 37. You look good, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, you look good, I man. I thought, I, was, I thought you were going to say like 30. So so let me ask you this. If you could go back and tell 18, 19-year-old <laughs> Cliff something, is there anything you might shift? Is there anything you might do differently? Is there anything you might expand on or anything like that? I think the only thing that I would change is um, I wish I would have gotten into investing earlier, yeah. investing in real estate earlier. Um, and I, I know that's typically most most people's did, did, answer. Did you, sorry to interrupt. Did you blow a lot of money when you were young? Did you go off and do the Lamborghini and all that stupid shit like uh, I did? I didn't go too crazy, but no. I did. I, I mean, looking back at it, some of the stuff I did was dumb. Yeah. I didn't feel like I was broke or anything by right. any means, right. but like when I first got drafted, I bought an Escalade brand new. Nice. And it, it you know, sure. it was it was it was a dream car and all sure. these different things, but it wasn't the right timing. But thank God I was able to right my wrongs right. Uh, by being able to play a long time. Because mm-hmm. uh, as most people know, I mean, in the NFL, the average is less than three years, right? Right, so, and, and and they that you know they end up with a big entourage that, oh, that sucks the money right out of them. You yeah, know, which, and it, financial literacy plays a big role sure, too. Of like course, you know, of like not knowing, and I think this is a America issue, yeah, right? Of course it is. Uh, yeah. Like we're not financially literate, and so we want to spend more than we make we we want to buy keeping up with the joneses all these types of things and it gets a lot of young players in trouble but the problem is not only do do we all make mistakes the average is less than three so uh, so you don't even get the the chance to right those wrongs you don't get to learn from those mistakes uh again fortunately for me being able to play 10 years beating the odds by three um I did make some mistakes, but I was able to learn along the journey. So now I'm in a place where I, I, I have a better understanding, a better grasp on my finances, under, understanding that, um, again, cash flow is everything and, and trying to build those things out. But unfortunately, most guys don't get the right their wrongs. Have you ever tried to add value to some of these young players and these teammates and things like that, showing them what you're doing? And Oh, most definitely. Most yeah. definitely. I, I talked to quite a few of my guys, um, especially now that they know I'm into the real estate space. Yeah. A lot of guys are reaching out. Oh, but uh, uh, I do a lot of things with the Seahawks as well. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm kind of, I, I, they bring me in every summer to to talk to guys about real estate, oh, talk good. about multifamily. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, not all teams are like that, mm-hmm. but the Seattle Seahawks are, are are really good with making sure that they're pouring back into the kids, yeah, pouring back into these guys good. because because they know the average is less yeah. than than three years. They know that that the finish uh, that your career is actually closer to being over with than you expect as a young player, and and. You know, as a as a as a player in the NFL, and I've experienced this, is you know we walk into that locker room thinking that three years is not me. I'm gonna play ten years, well, of course, right? Of course. With, but you need that confidence. You need right. that sure. that 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 ego a little bit to get through it. But again, for unfortunately, that's not the case for most guys. But the Seahawks do a great job from day one, making sure guys are understanding what to do with their money, making sure they're not just handing their money over to people and not knowing what's going on with it, uh, and to start just thinking outside the box. That, that really says a lot about the brand, I'm going to tell no you doubt. that. Was there any fear 
when you got started in real estate? I mean, was there any, I mean, of course you've got, you had some resources, so you probably had money in the bank, so it mm -hmm. wasn't quite as scary as, as it might be for someone that doesn't have your resources, yeah. but was there fear number one? And if so, how'd you get over it? Of course. Uh, I think there's always fear in trying anything new, right? right. Um, when you don't know, um, when you don't know uh, what that landscape looks like, what, what what's to come, how to, the, the entire approach, you know, um, so, yeah, there was definitely fear uh, initially. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, going back to what I said earlier, the the only way you get through that fear, the only way you 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 learn is by jumping in the game is, is being. And, and again, uh, I, like I said, I, I like to crawl before I walk. So the first thing I did when I retired was and my first rental was um, I'm like, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to buy a condo and I'm going to only rent it to athletes in the Seattle market, right? I'm going to only rent it to, to because I knew what they needed. I was going to furnish it. I knew they were only going to be there, you know, eight months out of the year. Uh, I knew they weren't going to be in the actual unit much because their work schedule, I, I understood all that stuff. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go with what's comfortable. I'm going to go with what I know. I'm going to rent out to these guys. Did it work? It worked great. I still own those. Uh, I own three condos that I do that with now. Wow. Uh, but I, what I started realizing is you can make more money uh, in other spaces, whether it be multifamily condos, have these HOA fees. Oh, the HOA kills you. They kill condo, you. Yeah. But rents are so high um, because these guys are doing shorter term mm -hmm. rents. Mm -hmm. it, it pencils, but it's not a good solid business plan, yeah. right? Um, but I still own those. But that's what I started off with. And then I, I then after I did a few single family stuff, I went and bought a triplex. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, let's see what this feels All like. All in Seattle? Um, no, the triplex actually was in Chicago. Chicago, okay. A full gut rehab, mm -hmm. a value add. We were able to refinance, pull out 95% of our capital. I'm like, nice. okay, this works. Right. Then we went and bought a bigger asset and, and just kept building from there. Um, instead of just, I'm glad I went in that way because I learned something when I had a single family. I oh, learned yeah. some stuff when I had the you, triplex. You do a full gut, you learn a lot. You learn a lot. Yeah. So now you know what to look for when you go right. buy the 58. That's you, right. you know what to look for when you go buy a hundred right. units, right? So um, that that was kind of my game plan and how I approached the game. But uh, of course, you're, you're constantly learning. I think I think you learn from good or bad. You just got to well, be. Let's paying talk attention. about bad for a minute. So talk about a talk about you know I call them seminars. Yep, so, you know, seminars. I, I, yep. No one's. I haven't met anybody that had a bigger seminar than I did. No wait, but talk about a seminar you had. You yes. know, you got your ass handed to you, and maybe the lesson in it if there, if, you, if something comes to mind. I and mean, we, I know you've got tons of them. Everybody for sure. Has tons of them. Oh yeah, yeah. No, we got. I mean, we got seminars left and right, right. and it, but it's all about not letting it stop you, right? Right. But um, so yeah, well, I, I have a a a fourteen unit uh full gut rehab that that we were working. On. We budgeted it out, got the contractors out, get bids, all these different things. Um, but uh, contract, you know, you can't go with the cheapest. That's right. for sure. That's one one thing I've learned. Mm -hmm. But then also, once we got into the the process and and you know start the renovation, you go through the permitting process and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to realize like, okay, um, our budget's off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we were off by about three hundred thousand bucks. Oh actually. shit, that's a it, big off. That's a bit, yeah, exactly. It was off by three hundred, but but fortunately enough, there was so much meat on the bone from a value add perspective, mm. and the rents were gradually going up throughout the process. Mm -hmm. We were able to recoup some of that uh, mm -hmm. on the refinance still, okay. but being able to like being over budget by 300k and you, you can't go to these private lenders and different things now you're like okay what like what do we do you know and again fortunately for me i have different resources that i, I was able to use whether it be you know different margin loans and different mm -hmm. things like that to, to be able to recoup some of those funds back mm -hmm. for the project but uh, a lot learned there because again it goes back to the reserve component it goes back to uh you know just having different contingencies and, and different things like that in your performer to make sure that you're um you know you're well allocated you're, you're you have enough to, to get you to the finish line yep. it's better to have more money oh, yeah, and not always. use it all than to not have enough and have to go find it yeah 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 that's a good one that's a good one so in your life your whole life buddy what do you think's the biggest obstacle you had to overcome myself oh good answer um, good answer you talk about fear you talk yeah. about doubt yeah um not feeling worthy enough yeah. um you had that too, me too. Yeah, yeah yeah um i don't deserve this the, how, how, yeah. why me how did yeah. i get here yeah. you know or and honestly i so i i i just brought back my last two family members that were in haiti oh, no um so i don't have any more family members in haiti mm -hmm. now but i always look at it like wow you could have easily been 
one of those kids that was born in Haiti? Like, why did my grandfather pick my mother and send her to the States instead of her other three or four siblings, mm-hmm. right? Like, those, those are questions that I've always had to ask myself. And then now, more so than anything, it's like, no, just take advantage of the opportunity. Like, yeah. th- stop asking why, and more so, like, understanding that you're here for a reason. You're here to be able to help them come. Oh, good you're answer. here to be able to, to, to support and do for others. You're here to serve people, mm-hmm. right? Um, but the biggest obstacle was was myself and, and, and the doubt that I I would create uh, mentally, you know, leaving Jacksonville, Florida, going to Indiana, uh, never been out, never left Florida outside of going to Haiti up until I started getting recruited for school. So now I'm in a whole different area and like just trying to navigate those waters like, should I be here? Do I fit in? You know, all these different things that you, you kind of uncertainty. Yeah. You yeah. just, you just, uh, you just, and no one likes being uncertain about right. anything. Right. So, uh, all of those moments, um, you know, you just start to create doubt, but imposter I, syndrome. And, oh, it's syndrome. real we, survivor's we, we, remorse. Too. Like we it's, too. it's yeah, all, yeah. it's all kinds of things that you go through. Uh, and you just doubt yourself. You start to ask questions or whatnot. But I think, I think, uh, all, but being able to work through that though is what um, makes you gives you it gives you that strength, makes right? You strong, man. exactly gives you that strength That's to be able right. to bounce back. So, but yeah, the doubt doubting myself, I think, would be the the biggest yeah. obstacle that I've I had. Yeah. And battling yourself is tough. You oh. know what I mean? Other people, you can kind of block them out. You yeah. can, you know, you can you can stay away from them, but. Yeah. If you're in your own head, sometimes it's, it's tough to get out of it. But, um, you know, great it, answer, once you get through it, though, um, you know, it makes you stronger. No, that that answer helped just about everybody listening, because that is probably one of the biggest things you've got. To, you've got to get out of your own way. You've got to trust that anything you give your full energy and effort to is going to flourish, period. If you tr- if you truly give it everything, yes, yes. truly give it everything, not half ass. And. And you've got to believe in yourself. And the only way you can believe in yourself and build self self confidence is, is by doing. Yes. That's the only way you can build it. Agreed. By doing, but also how you talk to yourself is huge too. Oh yeah, the questions you ask yourself. Yeah. Not, how none you of talk. the why questions. Yeah. None of the why questions. It's the how questions. Exactly. You ask yourself. Exactly. Yeah. By the way, um, where where hey Matt, where are my questions? Because I've got a list of of questions, personal questions that uh, that um, they could they it's could. On the links too. Okay, it's on links. Yep. Yep. We've added all. Oh, fantastic. So, guys, if you go to Rod's links, I've got hundreds of questions you should ask yourself, not just not just and some of them are business. A lot of them are business related, but a lot of them are personal questions, you know, to to help you, you know, get in touch with um, parts of yourself that you don't normally think about. Who loves me? Who do I love? Why do I deserve this? What, you know, there's, there's just a whole bunch of them there. And that's, they're at Rod's links as well. Uh, again, text links to seven, two, three, four, five. They're in the free book section. Um, some, because y- your life really revolves around the quality of the questions you ask yourself because they direct you and yep. you know either negatively or positively. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. And 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 what you just believe in, like it, right. it will affect how you believe in yourself. It'll affect how you believe in what's going on in your life and and what you're doing. So you definitely have to watch kind of what what the thoughts are in your head because it yeah. can either take you the right direction or it can take you take you under. What well, whatever you focus on is what's going to grow, positive yes. or negative. And uh, a lot of people. You know, we connect through negative. You know, like if 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 you go up to somebody and say, "How you doing?" They're like, "Oh, I'm fantastic. God, yeah. life's amazing." Most people step back and say, "Okay, he's off his meds." Yeah, yeah. But if if you go up to somebody and say, "How you doing?" They're like, "Oh man, oh my back is killing me. I just lost twenty grand." Blah blah blah. They put their arm around you and say, "Oh, I feel yeah. you, brother." We collect through we connect through pain and negativity, yeah. and you can't do that. You want to you got to be around people that want more out of life. That's the reason my warriors are killing it it's because you know they're people that want more out of life so you got to be really protective of who you allow to influence you would you agree with that 1000 yeah. uh, percent. i mean attitude and all that stuff is contagious too right right so who you surround yourself with uh, i mean what do they say you know show me your, your five friends i'll show you kind of what your future looks like right, right. it's all it's, it's all about um the attitude the mindset that people have and it's it's contagious right um if somebody if you're around uh uh downers all day people that are negative and all these like you're gonna find yourself being negative, question yourself, and all, and it's the same thing with when you're around positive people, right? So sure. I, I agree. Who you surround yourself with, and the type of information and the type of energy that they're giving off, well, is, is very contagious. So you got to be careful with that. Do you have any sort of a ritual, uh, like a morning ritual or a routine or anything that helps you set the day off right? 
Oh, every morning, every morning, at least five out of the seven days, I I, I get up and pray. That's mm-hmm. every day. Right. I get up and pray, but every morning I, I get up and go work out. No I problem. have to. I, yeah. And I'm playing a lot of pickleball now. I'm big, I'm big uh, on know, pickleball. I'm just putting pickleball courts in that San Antonio asset. I don't even know what the hell it is. Yeah, pickleball. Okay. Hey, it's it's, it's good, legit. It's is legit. It? All right, I'll check it I, out. I'm actually cause... part owner of a, uh, in a, a major league pickleball team. Oh, um, no kidding. Yeah, but I, 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 I love pickleball, so I play that for an hour, hour and a half every morning, and then I hit the weight room for another hour. Wow. I have to say, I set my days off every single day like that. But more so than anything, I just feel good about myself once sure. I'm done, sure. right? You get, I don't know, is that what it, endorphins? It's a, it's and a it, completion like, thing. It's the endorphin yeah. thing. It's the dopamine thing. It's everything. I, I, have you cold plunged yet? Oh, I'm big, I'm big on that too. Oh, dude, I got yeah. one right back here, man. Oh, really? I just did it right before you got here nice. for five minutes. Wish I'm up. loving it. I mean, I'm freaking loving it. I do it every day for five minutes. But uh, yeah, no, I love it. So, so do you have any uh quotes that have juiced you over the years anything that comes to mind if not it's cool and if- oh um yeah i mean i i have all kinds of quotes but um <laughs> i was just uh one quote that 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 comes to mind mm-hmm. especially for athletes yeah. um or entertainers or whatever but and, and i tell my my my, my brother this because he's he's kind of he's coming up the ranks as far as for uh the entertainment space or whatever mm-hmm. but is is uh if you live for the cheers you'll die by the booze. Mm. Meaning if you are, um, oh, if you're looking for, the, if you're yeah. looking for uh, people to hype you up and you're looking for people to acknowledge and, and, and applaud you all the time. Right. Well, when that leaves, cause it will, right. uh, and I've experienced it to yeah. a certain degree. Um, if you live for that, then when you don't receive it, um, you're you feel lost. Yeah, you're you feel destroyed. lost. Yeah. Right. So uh, I'm big on that and making sure that I'm, I'm centered in myself. I'm centered in, 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 in God and also just making sure that I'm um, I'm not looking for the cheers because I don't want to die by the booze. No, you, 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 you're, you're doing it for yourself. Yeah, that's 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 the that's the, the key piece there. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've got lots of them, but and certainly in the NFL um, space, do you have any mentors that you'd like to acknowledge that have, that have, that have, that have been oh, there yes. for you? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'll acknowledge more on the business side right now. All, all my guys that, that have helped me through the NFL, whether it's a guy by the name of Kyle Vandenbosch who took me underneath his wing when I was young, a mm-hmm. uh, defensive end, he's probably going to be a Hall of Famer at some point. Wow. Um, he took me underneath his wing and allowed me to, know what it is to be a pro nice. now on the business side of things i only hang around business folks that are doing way better than me i'm yeah. talking about again guys that are that are crushing it because at some point you know one, one that stuff rubs off on you and then we talked about the top five people that you hang out with it show you yeah. your future right yeah. uh whether it's a, a guy by the name of eric anderson who who started a company um when he was in his 30s or something like that, he was, he started a company back in the day where he actually used to send people to space. Like billionaires and millionaires would pay wow. crazy amount of money to go to space, right? Um, so someone like him or, or a, a guy by the name BJ Kula who's big into the real estate space out in Seattle who, I mean, they probably have a few billion dollars uh, of, of yes, assets man. under management, right? So uh, I, w- I would list those two for the time being, but there's quite a few guys that, that um, you know, that I, I, I hang out with that, that teach me a, a lot in the real estate space and entrepreneur space nice 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 i have to tell you cliff one thing that just frankly blew me away when i started reading your bio and uh um is you're a real humble guy because you really didn't even bring it up before we got started here but you've got a foundation yes sir um talk about that talk about that Yes, uh, we have the Cliff Averill Family Foundation. Uh, we've had it for the last 12 years, and uh, it's geared towards juvenile diabetes, but also the education system in Haiti. Um, mm. We've built a school in Haiti. We've built homes in Haiti. Uh, then we do a lot of work with diabetes because diabetes is very prevalent in the, in in the, the Haitian community, com- in, right? in the black community, but yeah, in particular yeah. the Haitian community yes, based okay. on their diet mm. and you know eating a lot of rice and different things like that. Mm. Um, so we do a lot of work with them. But now we're doing uh, I have this uh, other component of the foundation called the Cliffs crew Mm -hmm. and what it what it's about is uh, I've been mentoring these young uh, boys since they were in third grade now they're in eighth and ninth grade and the 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 reason behind the Cliffs crew is we want to show them that that there's other professions in their own backyard being Seattle uh, currently but for for whatever reason 
not even for whatever reason, but for, for a lot of kids in America, you know, success looks like being an athlete or an entertainer, mm -hmm. right? And unfortunately, there's only so many slots, right? right. I think of high school kids, uh, that actually get to make it to the pros, I think it's 0.001% that actually okay. make it to the pros, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying none of those kids can't make it, but having other ways of looking at success. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's so good. I, I give them this, I, I, I give this example all the time. So I took them to the VMAC, which is the practice facility for the Seattle Seahawks. Mm, nice. If you go into that building, every profession you can think of is in there. Whether you talk about lawyers, accountants, doctors, chefs, uh, whatever you can think of is in that building. But you don't know that unless you're, you're privy to it, unless somebody exposes you to it. So we're all about exposure. And when we won a Super Bowl, guess what? Every one of those guys got a Super Bowl ring, too, because they play a role in the success of the Seattle Seahawks. Right. So you're able to win Super Bowl rings without even getting on the field. Oh, right. That's so good. But like being exposed to that and knowing that this exists is the first step. And that's what the Cliff Screw is all about, is exposing these kids to different professions that they can be and have success, still be able to change their lives, change the lives of their families without actually necessarily being on the TV screen, without actually being, uh, 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 you know, an entertainer of some sort. Yeah. So we just want to expose them and make sure that they, they know they can be uh, successful in any, any way as long as they put their minds to it. That's so freaking good, brother. I can't even tell you that. That's so good. That's so brilliant because it... it, it it gives them options. And, you know, and again, you're so freaking humble. Not only did you build a school for, for serving 500 kids, you built 25 homes in Haiti. Mm -hmm. You know, you, get, you, you, you host quarterly mobile health clinics. Yeah. You teach football to 300 youth annually. I mean, guys, this list goes on and <laughs> on and on. You know, uh, he, he, he supports different clinics and other causes. And, uh, again, I, I, it just goes on and on, which just blew me away. And, um and I got to tell you, and I was mentioning this to you before we started recording, Cliff, you know, I did a Hall of Fame award for my successful warriors. Uh, we do it every year. At, I mean, every live event. And you were there and saw mm -hmm. it. And you know, we do a little slide for each one of them. And and you start to notice that every single one of them gives back. This is what we call a clue, guys. Yeah. OK, here you've got somebody who was literally the best in the world at what he did and 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 giving back because power moves to those who serve right no doubt that's the way it works I, man that's I the think, way god works i think uh, but see I, I think all of us are here to serve one another but, right? contribution is a basic human need yes unfortunately some people don't realize it yes but we were put on this earth to contribute and honestly frankly anything on earth that doesn't contribute ultimately gets eliminated yeah that's the way that's the way yeah that's works, how it man. works no yeah. i agree yeah. i think i think sir we, we're here to serve one another i think we're yeah. here to do for one another uh i don't think anybody's better than the next person yeah. um and and i think that's where ego and everything else comes into play because um you know we start feeling like we're better than the next person like no you put your pants on just like the next person right. does. you bleed that's just right. like the next person that's does. Right. we try to find all these different things that separates us but in all in all reality we're 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 uh, more alike than not, right? And we're here to do for one another. And I and and I, it was interesting hearing, you know, some of the the warriors and you know all the different things that they're doing and around the world and giving right. back or whatever. But I think for me, you know, just again my upbringing, seeing my mom, um, seeing my mom come to the states, struggle, working, working these jobs, but not only struggling. Um, you know, I'm seeing, you know, that the lights might get cut off and different things like that, but she still would find ways to send money back to Haiti to her family. Oh, I love that. Right? So she was your inspiration for that. That's, exactly. That's exactly. Awesome. You're but, teaching your kids this stuff too, I'm sure. No doubt. They oh, go yeah. to all these trips with me. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're seeing it. We do a lot of different things during the holiday seasons. And um, if my mom can give with the little bit that she had, yeah. who am I not to give back with what I was What excuse to have you got, right? I have no excuse. Yeah, I have no excuse at it. all. It's beautiful, man. Well, listen, uh, I am super impressed with you, my friend, and it's such a treat to have you on the show and have you add value and inspire. And and uh, I can't wait to see where you are a year from two, a year or two from now, man. That's I appreciate good. it. I appreciate it. But I want to, I want to, I want to give you your, uh, your, your flowers as well. In a sense, like I've been following you, like I said, for the last three or four years, just seeing what you've been able to do with the Warriors, seeing what you, the, the, the commitment that you have as far as for helping people uh, be able to create cash flow and, and generational wealth through real estate. 
your platform is needed. Your platform is is needed, and a lot of people are paying attention, whether they are a warrior or not. But people are paying attention, and I appreciate it because it also gives me something. I mean, when I'm working out, I'm listening. I'm waiting on your shows every. You know, oh, the thanks, uh, you have the the five minute little clip that you give mm-hmm. that that that's motivating, and then you give your your clips or whatnot. So I pay attention as well, and it's definitely helpful as I go on my journey as well. So keep up the great work, man. I appreciate it. Oh, that's kind of you, brother. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. So one other quick thing, we encounter so many people that are frankly frustrated. You know, they're looking in the mirror and they're frustrated that they haven't been able to escape the rat race. They haven't been able to build cash flow to the point where they're able to have financial and time freedom with their families. You know, and maybe they see other people buying real estate and creating, you know, incredible cash flow. And they think, well, it's just scary. You know, buying apartments is intimidating. And I get it. See, that's why we created our Warrior Mentorship Program. They're our coaching students, and they've had extraordinary results. My students, I've been teaching about five years, and they own upwards of 140,000 units now that we know of, right? And we feel like it's just getting going. Now, we're looking to grow this group and really take it to the next level and honestly believe that the greatest transfer of wealth could be upon us right now with this current economic environment. Everything's going on sale. So we're looking for people who want to follow a proven framework, really like a blueprint or a map, literally step by step. And then they're able to leverage our systems and our incredible network to raise money and equity, to find deals and close those deals and build partnerships really nationwide. So if you're interested in finding out more about how you can become more in our incredible network and take advantage of the unbelievable opportunities that are upon us, you can apply to my Warrior Mentorship Program by texting the word CRUSH to 72345, or you can go to mentorwithrod.com. And what we'll do is we'll set up a call so you can check us out and we can check you out and see if it's a fit. Now, again, you can go to mentorwithrod.com or text the word CRUSH to 72345 to apply, and we will speak soon.